today we've got one of the thinnest keyboards in the world. This is the thinnest keyboard I've ever seen in my life. I've been seeing a lot more low profile keyboards and I think they're coming back. They're trending. So this is the Corsair K100 Air Wireless. That is a mouthful. It got released last year, but I really wanted to take a look at this because of their special switches. The switches is what makes this thing so freaking thin and no other switch company has even compared to what Cherry has done. So let's take a look. Look at this thing. Very glossy and super thin. Wow. Look at that. It's so thin. I did write down how thin it is. It is 17 millimeters of thin aluminum. What is that in inches? Editor can put whatever 17 millimeters equals in inches right here for all you people that use the imperial system instead of metric. I don't know why we do that. There's a peel at the top, so I'm just gonna tear it right off. Not super satisfying, but it's all right. So at the top of the case here, you get a pretty fat forehead, but it's okay because it's so thin and makes up for it, right? The more thin you are this way, the more you can expand that way, or maybe that makes no sense, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. The forehead has got a bunch of different buttons. Let's see, they're not super satisfying to click, but they are there. The leftmost one is profile switching. This has a ton of memory in it. I think it's eight megabytes of memory, which stores like 50 profiles. I don't know how many people in your household, but my household does not have 50 people. So between the two of us, we each can have 25 profiles. Yay, one for gaming, one for movies, one for music. I don't know what you need profiles for other than different games. The second one is brightness. So you can turn off the RGB, speaking of RGB, RGB. You want to see the RGB. It looks really nice. The RGB lights up the Corsair logo in the middle. You can also Windows lock for you gamers out there and hold the brightness button to turn off the RGB or up the brightness. I like bright because bright is nice. On the top left side, we got all your media controls. Previous song, pause, play, next song, a mute button and a scroll wheel that is not tactile at all. It's just an infinite scroll of no tactility. It's not satisfying, but it is nice if you want to go from zero to 100 and just <laughs> all the way. Not bad, not bad. So it's brushed aluminum. This screen, however, this gloss top does pick up fingerprints. So be careful there. On to the good stuff, the actual keys and what makes it so thin. So Cherry decided to go off and innovate and not be like, let's take a mechanical switch and let's just squish it into a tiny switch and call that low profile switch. It didn't work like that. They had to come up with something completely new to get the thin design. And that's how ULP switches came about. Well, in my head, that's how it came about. But obviously engineering works a lot more complicated than that. And I'm sure they had to iterate like a hundred million times to get to the ULP design that they have now. Cherry MX ultra low profile switch. Oh, did I mention that's what ULP stands for? Ultra low profile. It looks like a scissor switch that you see in a MacBook, except much better. There's a horizontal spring and that spring is freaking strong. And that's how you get the tactility that you have in a normal switch, but in such a thin design. So it's really cool. But as you can see, the keycaps don't exactly have a place to enter. So when we look at our Corsair K100 Air, there's keycaps on top. But the real question is, can you take them off? And the answer is after thorough digging across the internet, uh, you can but you as a consumer should not. And I as a consumer will not because Corsair says that although they are take offable and put onable, it takes an expert to do so. And you and I, we're not experts or are we? So keycaps are made of ABS plastic. They're shine through and they're not like flat. They have a slight curvature to them. There's a numpad. It is full size after all. So there's a numpad for all you productivity folks out there who like to use Excel sheets like myself. Sometimes, 1% of the time do I ever use a numpad. On top of the numpad, you've got four G keys, which are macro keys, and you can record macros right in the keyboard without having to use the IQ software, which is a big bonus because who wants to download software to do all of your customizable stuff? Although it is cool. The software is really cool. You can change your polling. So to start with, the polling I think starts at 2000. By default, it starts at 2000, which is already higher than 1000 that you get in normal normal gaming keyboards, but you can go up to 8,000 if you want. I, I have no need for that, but that's cool. I think 
<laughs> Back to the macro keys. You can record on the keyboard itself. You can also change the three different Bluetooth connectivities or the 2.4G using those buttons too. So wireless dongle already in the case, installed right on top. Very convenient and it's slipstream wireless. For you gamers out there, it's ultra fast, super easy to connect and it's hard to lose too. There's quite a bit of friction. And then on the top left, you got your USB-C cable and then a on off button here. A connection is seamless. You put this dongle into your computer, you turn it on and automatically it just has a pop-up thing that says your Corsair K100 is connected and boom, you're ready to go. So seamless and so easy to use. It makes other keyboards just like feel so slow. It's got a cool design on the back, lots of triangles. Corsair really likes triangles. There's two angles of kick of feet, which I actually do use for a low profile keyboard because if you put it like this, it's much too flat. For this one, I'd probably use the highest angle and then type the using that way. So while I did that, I actually only changed up the RGB, which you could change using FN1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I like just white, very basic, very simple. So if you don't want like your WASD being green and your number keys being blue and the wave going all around and sunset beaches, you don't have to download your IQ software unless you wanted to really mess around with different key bindings, different macros, different layers, different profiles, different colors. All that can be done in the software, but there's a lot that can be done without the software too. And I think that's a huge benefit. I hate downloading software. I hate it when it starts up my computer and it's like, oh, IQ opened up. And it takes a billion minutes to turn on my computer now instead of like 30 seconds. It's, uh, it's annoying. <laughs> to say the least. There's two types of UOP switches you can get. I got the tactile version or you can get the clicky. They both feel extremely tactile. The switch heaviness feels like a regular mechanical keyboard, except it's super thin. So the travel distance is not very far. And we gotta address the elephant in the room and that is the, uh, <clears throat> the space bar. The space bar uh, looks, looks great. Uh, it sounds not as great and I wish that I could lube it, but because the keycaps aren't as takeoffable and put onable, I uh, cannot and actually will not because I don't want to ruin a perfectly good keyboard that is quite pricey too. For battery life, because it is wireless, if you choose to turn RGB off, you can get up to a whopping 200 hours of battery life with no RGB. With RGB on, you get up to 50 hours, which is a pretty long time, especially since it does go to sleep whenever you're not using it. So it's really clean. You can have a completely wire-free setup, but I'm a pleb and I use wires, so I would, I would connect it because I don't like the hassle of charging. But lately, I've actually been using this with my laptop for when I work outside the home or in the living room, and it's been doing great. It's actually really good that the keycaps aren't takeoffable because if you're throwing the thing into your backpack, I've done that with another low profile keyboard, actually, this one. But I've put this thing in my backpack before and I've had keycaps just fall off and I have to dig at the bottom of the backpack and dig it back out and punch it back in. And that's a little bit inconvenient. So this thing, has not had that problem. And the only accessory you get is a charging cable that is braided and black and pretty nice looking. This one's quite flexible. It sort of reminds me of a mouse cable with how lightweight it is, but not quite as good as a paracord. Not bad, I like it. So at the top screen with the Corsair logo, you get how it's connected, the battery life, the windows lock, caps lock, scroll lock, num lock, all those indicators show up at the very top. So it's compatible with Windows, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation, nice. FN Enter gives you battery life and charging status. So right now I'm green. So if I wanted Bluetooth, I'll hold FN and then either G2, G3, or G4. Depending on which one you connect with, you actually get different colors. So you get solid blue, G for Bluetooth 1, cyan for Bluetooth 2, and magenta for Bluetooth 3. No, I like that. They've really thought about people and how people acquire information. Aha, this is what I wanted. Macro recording. Macros can be recorded at any time. You just hold this bad boy here for two seconds and I'm going to type uh, hnclick.com. Enter. You can save it on any key, FN plus key or G key. I'm just going to save it to G2. 
now I have number four. I've done it. I've done it. The mangroves are really cool. Very easy to do. Everything's in the quick start guide. Let's address the biggest elephant in the room, bigger than the sound of this big bar price. It is a, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? Uh, it's not budget. In no world is this budget. It is a whopping $279.99. It's a lot. I don't know what I could compare that to. It's a lot of money, but it does have a lot of nice stuff. It's super sturdy. I think this could last a really long time for somebody, but why would you want it? I think that's the real question here. One, if you really want a low profile keyboard, this is as thin and as low as it gets. And two, we all trust Cherry and their switches. Up to 50 million keystrokes with zero loss in quality. It's a really freaking cool switch. Probably the coolest switch you've ever seen, but you can't see it because you can't take it apart. Uh, so that's sort of a bummer. All right, so take a look at this and it is time to rate it on the comprehensive switch and click and keyboard database on Notion that pretty much has every keyboard that we've ever reviewed ever. Right now, Corsair K100 Air Wireless. Price is subject to change for right now. $279.99. Hot swappable? No, absolutely uh, not. Notes, the thinnest keyboard on the planet. Very high quality build. Unique cherry. ULP switches. RGB? Yes, absolutely. So, ranking. Hmm. It's super unique. It stands out from the crowd. I don't think you'll ever find another low profile keyboard quite like this one. It just stands out at a totally different level. I think if they did PBT keycaps, they would actually get more longevity out of it. ABS keycaps are gonna last a long time. It's just the oil is going to make it look a little bit older. You know what? I'm gonna give this five stars. I think if you get something like this, you will not be disappointed for the reason that you got it. Like the person that really wants something like this, wants something low profile, high quality, full size, they won't be disappointed with it. So that is my rating five stars. If you want access to this database, the link for it will be in the pinned comment down below, as well as a link to this bad boy. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.